Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and I'll start with some announcements and one of them has to do with the disabling of the comments part of this uh, YouTube channel. The reason we had to do this right now is because there is a defect in YouTube, uh, at least in some channels, ours happens to be one of them, that means that the comments don't go into a quarantined area to be approved by me or somebody in the office, they just go straight to public. And some of the things that um, people write are just too horrifying to allow to be public. And as soon as we discovered this, we contacted YouTube and um, they don't really have humans who work on these kinds of issues. Um, we've tried to talk to somebody about it, but there's nobody to talk to. So we just had to disable the comments for the time being. If you have something compelling to say, please feel free to email me at pampopper at msn.com. I do respond to everything civil that people send to me and I'm happy to respond to you as well. I did get a lot of comments on my uh, coronavirus uh, video. Uh, some of you seem to find some comfort in not being the only person who thinks that this is not quite right, what we're hearing. Some of you said, you know, it's good to know I'm not crazy because that's what I've been thinking the whole time. Um, some of you have uh, had your usual vitriol. And I think that the way we just have to leave this right now is that sooner or later, like with all things, uh, we will find out what actually happened and um, we'll see who's right. And I don't really think... I'm not in any kind of contest to be right. I simply express my opinion based on what I've seen happen in the past. The feds have lied to us in the past. The World Health Organization has lied to us in the past. And what it appears to me is going on is a lot of ginning up panic over nothing at this point in time. And the panic feeds panic feeds panic. It's like screaming fire in a um, theater when um, actually somebody lit a cigarette in the, uh, on the sidewalk outside the theater. That's the analogy that I would use for what's going on right now. Could that become a fire? Absolutely. Is there any reason for people to be scrambling over one another for the exit? I think not. So we'll just agree sometimes to disagree and we'll see what happens in the end. But uh, in any case, I wanted you to understand that um, I hope I'm welcome civil dialogue about this kind of thing. And as soon as we resolve our issues with YouTube, we'll be happy to open up comments again, but feel free to email me directly. I respond to every email I get that is civil, as I mentioned. A uh, couple of upcoming classes, um, cardiovascular disease uh, starts soon and Cancer 201. And what we're doing in Cancer 201 is kind of interesting, I think. Um, and this has to do with alternative treatments that people are curious about, like the use of medicinal mushrooms or the use of hyperthermia or um, uh, uh, Iscador. And so what people really wanna know is, is, is this helpful for me with my particular type of cancer? Um, and what role does it play? And so we're trying to quantify this. So if you were to use medicinal mushrooms, the ones that are effective are these, and the benefit that you can expect to get is this, and the types of cancer for which there is some evidence are these types, um, and that sort of thing. So I have a marvelous research associate who is just marvelous at digging up this kind of information, who is working on this course. And we're very excited to give it to you because we think that cancer patients have difficult decisions to make and the more accurate data that can be provided, uh, the better off they will be. So looking forward to that. Um, you guys who are interested in careers, keep those emails coming. I have conversations with people every week about this and I have scheduled a couple of conference calls, um, one for March 24th at 1 p.m. The other for Monday, April 6th at 9 p.m. Those are Eastern times. Um, and this will be an opportunity for me to tell a group of you about some of our professional development programs. And you can also ask questions and that sort of thing. So no charge for these. And if you want to participate, send me an email at pampopper at msn.com. I'll sign you up for the conference call. And if you want to have a conversation about any of this before those times, I'm also happy to send you information and schedule a call as well. Remember, March 31st is the deadline for those of you who want to stop talking and start doing, uh, who are not members. Members get to do this stuff all the time. It is one of the benefits of membership, but um, those of you who aren't members just get to do it until the end of the month. And then uh, last but not least, the calendar through um, August, I think, is now online. And you'll see that I'm teaching an interesting course through the Institute and our Nutrition Educator Program um, that deals with employer health and uh, wellness programs and intervention programs that sort of thing, which might be interesting to people who are not even enrolled in our professional development courses. So, pampopper at msn.com. All right, today we're going to talk about protein. 
uh, protein and cardiovascular disease. Misunderstandings about dietary protein and protein requirements have persisted for over 150 years and they continue today. I think there are a lot of reasons for it. People like to hear good news about their bad habits. You know, a lot of people prefer a diet that's high in animal protein and they want some justification for their choices. High protein diets lead to fast initial weight gain and sometimes quick positive changes in biomarkers. Some people still think the quick fix is the best fix, even though in other areas of life most of us have learned, yeah, not so much. Many doctors who were taught that quick changes in biomarkers are the keys to health also learn nothing about nutrition and medical training and they become pretty excited about short changes and biomarkers due to high protein diets without thinking through or finding out the downside of long-term adherence to such a plan. But all that said, there's never really been any great body of evidence pointing to the need for or benefit from consuming a high protein diet from any food source, but especially animal protein. A new study shows that not only are high protein diets contraindicated for cardiovascular health, but also the interesting thing about this study was it identified a specific mechanism of action that explains how eating a diet with copious amounts of animal food damages the cardiovascular system. Researchers fed mice a diet that was high in fat in order to cause plaque buildup and atherosclerosis. Mice are like humans in this regard. They require a high fat diet in order to develop arterial plaque. Now, some of the mice were fed a high fat diet with low protein intake, 15% of calories. Other mice were fed a high fat diet and a high protein diet at the same time, 46% of calories from protein. The mice eating the high fat normal protein diet gained weight, while the mice on the higher protein diet did not, which appears to confirm that higher protein diets may be better for weight control. But the mice eating the higher protein diet developed about 30% more plaque in their arteries, which is one of the reasons why it actually may not be such a good idea. Now, plaques are filled with a combination of fat, cholesterol, calcium, and dead cells. Immune cells called macrophages remove debris from inside the plaques in an attempt to prevent the progression of atherosclerosis. But this protective mechanism can be overwhelmed by a faster accumulation of debris than can be effectively removed. And this is what happened with the high protein mice, according to the researchers. Protein is digested and broken down into its constituents amino acids. Higher than normal levels of amino acids triggers a protein in macrophages called mTOR, which disables their ability to clean toxic debris out of plaque and eventually leads to macrophage death. Plaques in the arteries of those high protein mice were packed with dead macrophages, which failed to clean out the plaques and instead contributed to their growth. An additional finding was that all amino acids don't have the same effect. For example, leucine, which is really high in red meat, has a much more powerful effect uh, in activating the mTOR protein than other amino acids. Thus an explanation for how diets high in red meat lead to increased risk of coronary artery disease. There are many reasons to avoid a high protein diet, particularly when the protein comes from animal foods. There are many ways in which high protein, high animal food diets lead to worsening health, and this study provides just one more mechanism of action that explains how. All right, that's all for today. And um, as usual, if you're not a subscriber, hit the subscriber button and pass it on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it. I will be back to you on Thursday with more news.